So I picked up this uh, motorcycle lift. It's the Harbor Freight thousand pound motorcycle lift. Um, these are notorious for the hydraulic pump to not work or leak or, or whatever. Um, and that was the case on this one. This one was not working. Uh, you'd pump it up and it wouldn't do anything at all. So I was going to do a video on this, but I decided not to because, to be honest, I didn't know 100% if I could get it to work or not. But, as you can see right now, everything's working pretty good. And I just had this bar. It didn't come with the safety bar. But, I'll just kind of stab this in here. There we go. So now we can work on this. Troy built 6250 watt, 8500 starting watt generator. It's in really good condition. I mean, other than the, the little waterproof, little bubbly things, which those you should be able to replace pretty easily. Um, but that's your breakers. Just push it. Um, so we've got 240, 30 amp. Like I said, everything seems pretty good. Um, might want to replace this. Uh, yeah, I'll probably replace that. Yeah, and bought it for $100. The lady said whenever it was running, her dog chewed on the wires. And that's what... No, that's what we have here. So, um, do a little research and just rewire this. It shouldn't, I don't think it should be all that hard. We'll figure out where all this stuff goes. Oil looks brand new. Uh, she said it only had about 10 hours on it, which. This is probably true. A lot of these generators, um, they don't really run all that long. Hang tight. I'll see if I can find a, a wiring schematic. Uh, and it's not, it's not hooked up back, back here either. Yeah, let me, uh, let me do some research on this. I'll see if I can find a, a wiring schematic, see what everything, where everything is supposed to go. And then uh, we'll see if we can get this $100 generator running. I'll get right back with you. Alright, so I can smell this fuel. It stinks. <laughs> it's clean, but you can tell it's old. So, we're going to drain that out. Fuel flow. Okay, so you will see a little bit of junk in there, but not too bad. Um, this comes off a gas tank into here. It's kind of like a last resort fuel catch. Bunch of water in there. That is. Which also might mean that the carburetor needs to be rebuilt. carburetors I've had to take apart or take off all right let's go take this to the workbench 
Alright, so it looks like somebody's been in here. Um, the lady said that they put fuel treatment in there, and they might have done that after the fact, but as of right now, there's no <laughs> fuel treatment in there. Um, it looks like the float might be stuck as well. See if we can get this float out. That should should come out. So there's a little persuasion. There it goes. There we go. I'll save that little spring. It also is bent a little bit, so we'll see if we can straighten that up. So I think the sill is fine. This does have the, like the rubber, like the rubber, rubber tip, so it should be fine with that. We'll clean this up real good, so that way it, it can slide better, and we'll also try to straighten this up. Okay, so let's get this junk off of here now. I'll use some brake cleaner. I'm going to cover the camera up so you can't see this so I don't damage my camera. I might be okay. If I just do it real quiet. Or if I just do it real light. Okay, so... Looks pretty clean. There's no fuel in there or nothing like that, so good float. Alright, so we got this all clean. Just got a little bit of WD 40 on it, so doesn't dry that rubber out too much. Okay. I can't tell if that's clogged down there, but I do see a little bit of light, I think. I have this for a torch, um, just to clean out the little holes. But they're also good for carburetors. Let's see if I have a small enough one. You see on there, there's a little bit of ridges on there, so that helps scrape out anything. Okay, so it looks like this one's here is gonna this one here is gonna be our closest one. And I don't want to make this hole any bigger, I just want to clean it out. can definitely see in there. So. Sweet. Alright, so get that all cleaned up, so we'll go ahead and put this back in. Just so everybody knows, you don't have to tighten these down. I mean, just a couple fingers as tight as you can get your little fingers. That should be good enough. Alright, so that should be hmm, probably pretty good. Good enough. This should be all clean and ready to go back in. Alright, so I got everything all hooked up. Looking good. It's probably not showing up, but anyways. Just got the carburetor on there. Um, need to put fuel in here. I may not do that just yet because I do want to look at the wiring schematic on this before I uh, get this running and <laughs> can't turn it off. I think all I need to do to turn it off is just ground this wire here. You see that? Just ground this wire. I think that'd probably turn it off. But 
I don't know for sure. All right, I'll probably get with you guys tomorrow, which will be here right now. Except today is not tomorrow. Today is like a week has passed. Good old Amazon. Bought this, um, here's $7 or something like that. Came with two of these little deals. And so, here's kind of my philosophy. Here's my philosophy with this. Um, if you have a go-kart or uh, something like that, uh, maybe a tiller or pressure washer or something like that, and you do have a low oil sensor, um, if you want to bypass it and get rid of it, that's cool. On something like a generator that's going to be running without somebody around it, um, which obviously that's what a generator is supposed to do, it's supposed to run, so you can go inside and enjoy your life. If something happened where it started leaking or a gasket started leaking and oil came out, it would still be running. Nobody would be around to see it. Then instead of just replacing a gasket or something like that, um, you blew up your engine. So on something like this, highly recommended. On a go-kart or a tiller or something like that that may have that, you're going to be right there. So if you see a puddle of oil, obviously you'll know to stop. So uh, that's kind of my philosophy on that. Um, I do think it is necessary on a on any type of engine that's going to run without an operator right there next to it. All right. So here's what we got here. So I think there was two different options. I could buy one for. I could buy one for $6.99 or buy two for $7.99 or I don't know, something like that. So I figure, well, if I need one now, I might need one in the future. Also went to Harbor Freight. Um, actually, I went to a couple of places just to kind of see how the wiring is. I don't see exactly how it is, but I'm going to wire it up the way I think it is. And then uh, I'll get back with you on that. So give me just a second. Uh, again this one I think that yellow wire went down in there uh, in order to replace this you literally have to take this off you have to split the engine open to get into there to replace it I'm gonna try to cut that off and use what we got all right hang on So I have a set of these, I'll show you here in just a second, the, the kit, but um, these work pretty good. Basically you're just going to put that end up there, and you just give it a couple of clicks, um, that kind of holds it in there, and you'll put your wire in. So you start to see it barely peek out the other side and crimp it. You got a really good solid connection. That ain't going. That ain't going nowhere. Okay. Okay, so this piece is done. You make a ground wire from up here to down here. So I didn't have any green. The other one I had was brown. I didn't really like brown, but I have a lot. I have a lot of this yellow, so I figured a good time to use it.
Okay, so I got this little thingy. Now, since there's no power that goes through this, um, I brought out my shrink tubing, but I don't need it. Um, there's no there's no actual power that's going through this, so all it's going to do is just going to ground out. So we don't need that. But just going to put this on and this on. We have this and then our screw. So this little sandwich going on, just like that. This will plug into here. This will plug into here. Okay, so here's how we're doing this. This one is going to be piggybacked into this one. Got me? So let's go ahead and do that. Let me check, make sure all this good. Hmm. All right. So this will plug into this. So then this will plug into this. This plugs into this. Let's go ahead and do this. So this will plug into up here. Okay, so I put a little bit of gas in there. Let's just see how this will work. Um, I did check, I got spark, so I had this on. on. put a, uh, a cover over this just to keep it from vibrating and maybe grounding out if you do that then it kills it uh, but yeah got everything got everything together so I did try to find these little caps and I couldn't find anything it looks like there's also some of these little covers they kind of just go over this in case it rains or whatever. Keep stuff from uh, I turn that off. Just keep stuff from grounding out or getting water in there or whatever. As of right now, I got a couple of tarps. Thank you, Harbor Freight, free tarp. But yeah, this is the this is the little kit that I was talking about. Um, I did buy this extra. I think this by itself was like, I don't know, $15 or something like that, maybe 20 But that should be everything that I need. But this just keeps you from over tightening and all that. I just got a, 
I'm not experienced enough to know which one to use when and all that so I grab a couple of I grab a couple extra ones to practice before I actually do it on the the main one that I need so that kind of leads us to where are we going to uh, put the generator so what I'm kind of thinking is we might move this down over here um, that's the dryer vent so I think if that's underneath this which you know, it's open under there uh, dryer vent can come out here we'll move the generator to about right here and then we'll just do a, a plug um, probably the easiest and cheapest is to come up this way into the attic over um, up still still up in the attic so still up in the attic over to here and then down to here a cheap way that you can do this is and this is only on emergency situations again you turn this off and for your output you bring that in here and you come to your 220 volt line and plug it in there and then all the power would get fed through that we have 200 amps coming into the house um, maybe we can put a switch here or something to where it can only be on where one of those can only be on at one time so I don't know well we'll see that's why I'm not doing this again I, I kind of told you the emergency way to do this but it's not an emergency right now so I want to make sure that I do it right also whenever we sell the house all that will do is just add value to the house because there's going to be a generator hookup and to be honest our house very rarely loses power um, even in bad storms and ice and stuff like that most of our lines are buried uh, because well we live in tornado valley um, but whenever we've had tornadoes hit within a couple miles of us we've been out for uh, for a while so uh, probably about four days max but this way we can keep the food that's in the refrigerator good we can still be on the internet we can still watch tv if we want to we can still cook ours is a um, electric cook stove but our heater and all that is gas so yeah it'll be good i did put some shrink tubing on there just to keep it from grounding out or anything like that so all right guys well that uh that about rounds that up i'm going to put some stable uh fuel treatment in there uh, you saw that i ran it out of gas so that's that's always do that and always use ethanol free gasoline on these small engines they do not like the other yeah there you go hundred dollar generator fixed ready to go be sure to check out the affiliate link um it helps out the channel. I appreciate you. Thanks for watching. See ya.